We're going to talk about a system type of management, and I call it the Moneyball system. The Moneyball historically comes from terminology that was first used to analyze massive amounts of data for the Oakland Athletics. Who knows where they're going to end up, but that being said, they really did change the entire game of baseball when a, a, a team of low-paid workers, you know, baseball players, sat down and took a massive number of titles in the aspect of paying attention to the micro data. So I call it the money ball system. So you have money ball as well as systems management where you start taking all we've learned already, the aspect of the scientific management, the human relations management, and then you start looking at quantifying data as to how we go about approaching different aspects of it. Evidence-based management. It really does make operations more effective. It really focuses on, on the hard facts and rejects nonsense. And sometimes, even though you may feel that I have this over here by my intuition, sometimes your intuition's wrong. You then need to go back and look at the numbers. If we recall the four functions of management, planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, that controlling part is where we sit down and look on the evidence-based management. We look at the hard facts and reject the nonsense out of it. A lot of times we have the job functions, we schedule, plan, and, and, and delegate the work and job training. We plan production to meet customer needs, especially in things like supply chain management. Everything from the actual, the, the raw minerals to actually start producing your different processes and your different products, all the way to the very end when it delivers itself on the customer's doorstep. And we design services, how the customers want and how to deliver them, Pay attention to all the numbers, how fast they are, how you go about handling them. Look at the optimal levels of product inventory to help keep costs down and keep stuff from sitting on shelves in different warehouses across the country. We call all this data collection evidence-based management. We, we look at the hard facts about what works and what doesn't. We need to understand the half-truths that sometimes we all have this feeling or thoughts about management, but once you sit back and you look at it, you have problems over here. Once upon a time in human resources, we offer a service. There's two different customers in human resources. One of them is the outside people that are applying for a job to get into the institution. Well, in, at South Orange, we have over 4,400 employees. It's a big place. But that said, we had that, and we had complaints about the speed of the hiring practice. So we went back and we looked at the data. We took the job hiring process, everything from the time the job was posted, all the way to the time that the person was actually walking into the door on their first day of work. About 80% of that relied upon the college's process and the different aspects of how often they scheduled things, what, how long it took them to sign the forms, and 20% was on us. So we sat there and gave them the data, and they didn't appreciate being called out, and it says, but it's human resources problem. Well, no, it's your problem. You fix this, 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 this is our 20%. You deal with this over here as we help them work with the, that 80%. You'll find a lot of times trying to sit down and examine the data will change perceptions and help you identify exactly what the problems are and what the bottlenecks tend to be. And sometimes they can sit down and save massive amounts of time. And when you're in the world of business, time is money. So pay attention to all the evidence-based management. It's a big thing. How you set up your entire system, make certain it's global and that you're understanding all the different components in it. Because if you don't know the components and you don't know what they do and how they function and how they interact, you're going to have a difficult time understanding what the problems are, what the bottlenecks are, and how we go about addressing those from a systems approach. You want to, four things, you, you want to look at the inputs, the actual transformation of that, outputs, and then the feedback that you have. A really simple one is Starbucks. Starbucks, they have coffee beans, they come in the back door, they have cups, and they sit down there and they process the coffee beans by grinding them, putting the different types of beans in different types of brewing systems, and then they pour it into a cup, and then they serve it to a customer. So you have the inputs, you transform it by grinding it and running hot water over it, and then the output is the actual final product. Well, then you also have sandwiches, you have other types of food they sell, but that, that can come from different vendors inside. It just depends how it's all set up. So with that, 
then you have feedback. Well, Starbucks has a really nice environment that's part of the overall product. So you look on the aspect of the systems if they're open or closed. Just in case you wanted to know, let me, let me share something very detailed with you. What do you call a past barista? Somebody that was a barista that brewed coffee and, and ground up the beans and made it. You call them a has been. I know, it's a dad joke. I like dad jokes. I do better off in the person. Anyway, so that being said, systems can be open or closed. Okay, the, the synergy in the system creates the effect of the sum is greater than the efforts of all the individual efforts. In theory, if you have a team of five, you, you can sit down and have the work done much faster than if you took one job and divide it into five different components. In theory, it should be faster than one person doing all five of the efforts. So pay attention to the aspect of the complexity of it. And there really are four parts of the system that I want you to know. There's always the inputs. Then there's some type of transformational process, whether it is a product or a service, something gets processed. Somebody comes in, they go into a CPA office, they want their tax done. So the input is all the different aspects that go into the process. And then the CPA firm, they transform the process. And that transformation could take place in their office. A lot of times, believe it or not, it takes place overseas in India. Okay, And then they, they do all the work over in India, ship it back, charge an inexpensive price in two digits. And by the time the CPA firm done, they have triple digits, charging outrageous fees, getting a couple hundred extra dollars on each return. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. Then they transform it, and the output is the actual filing of the taxes with, with whatever government you're doing. And then if there's any kind of feedback, you have that process as well. Four parts of the system. Input, transformation, output, and then feedback. Contingency, when we start looking at the aspect of contingency, you find out that sometimes results can be better achieved by breaking the one best way rule. Sometimes there's certain situations that may change how we do business. The beauty, simplicity of the theory lies in a proposition that there's no one best way to manage. Sometimes you have employees that'll work for you and this employee needs absolutely no supervision. Frankly, you could not talk to them for two years and they would come in every single day on time or early, work late, do a good job and go home and they would be happy in their job and you'd be happy with their performance. Some other people, you have to sit down and sit down, park next to them twice a week because of the fact that they're late, they don't get the work done or anything else, and you train them, train them, train them. Two different ways of managing them. Sometimes you need to deal with them like you would an organic system, like the employee that's self-starting, and sometimes you need to have the mechanism, yo, we start work at eight o'clock here. How come you're not here at eight o'clock? You're always here at 8.15. Come on, let's get together now. If I, this happens again, I'm gonna write you up. Two different things. You do a really good job. You're always here on time. I really appreciate that. I don't have to supervise you at all. You're really good and your work is fabulous. Two different ways for two different people. That is how it is sometimes with not just people, but a portion of the system itself. A learning organization. A lot of times that's a terminology. We kind of sling it around maybe too much, but the organization should be learning and getting better as time goes on. And if you do, then you're gonna have some of those high performance work practices. That A level that you're always seeking and hoping to get. Sometimes that A level may take some adjusting and training, development, promotion, demotion, termination, or hiring more people, or hiring better people, or just deal with the ones you have and making them a, a better employee by giving them better knowledge in the process. And so you have different aspects of it. Really, the organization needs to continually learn and get better and then review the knowledge that you have and knowledge that you should get on a regular basis. You'd think that at college, we would have a lot of this. It's a surprising how, as a system, you, you, your professors, they need to be on the ball and keep on learning all the time because the world is shifting. And sometimes it's amazing how much work that takes, whether it's a, it's a good thing or a bad thing. So we all need to keep on learning as individuals but we all, as an organization, need to always pay attention to what is the best place of dealing with it. And the job of management is really to create human resource practices that really have good, solid employee development and performance. A lot of times, you're developing somebody's skills long-term for that person to get promoted into management. Wait a minute, this class is about management. Oh, good idea. Okay, that's employee development. 
employee training is training them on the current job. So for management, if you're going to have employee development, look for ability enhancing practices, motivation practices. You want to have that as well. And then opportunities, have opportunities to shift roles, to change roles or do something new or something different. Money ball assistance management, data driven, but avoid brainlessness. Nobody wants to have a job where you don't have a brain that, that you need to think about the job. People, a lot of times, like to work. By the way, that sounds like a theory why manager, doesn't it? There's four parts of the system. Know what they are. Inputs, transformation, outputs, and feedback. All that is part of the what I call the money ball and systems management. Take care.